That's okay. Take a moment if you need. We're recording now. I am with a lovely lady. Her name is Lindsay Cholak from Calgary, I believe, Calgary, Alberta. So she's a fellow Canadian. And we were just having a Zoom chat together. And we were talking about our careers as coaches because we're both coaches. We have some similar interests. And we thought, wouldn't it be nice just to get spontaneously do a little video and take a compelling topic because she's been coaching for years. I have been coaching for years. So the first thing I want to do is welcome you, Lindsay. Welcome to the Night Talk show, so to speak. Awesome. Thank you, Alan. It's so nice to connect with you. And I'm so glad that we're doing this spontaneously. I think there's a lot of positive things that are going to come out of it, a lot of insight for those who are listening, who the, those who are watching. Well, I certainly hope so. So before we get into our topic, and you and I, 10 minutes ago, literally decided that our topic is going to be, I think it's a fascinating topic, one that we can go on for months talking about, is how do we get out of our comfort zone, right? That's the one we agreed on. How to get out of yeah. our, so you and I both agreed because we're very shy, one way of overcoming our getting out of the comfort zone is to do this video. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so why not do it right away? Why dwell on it? So before we get into it, could you just say a word in a nutshell, what you do, who you work with, and what, what, the, what is the type of your work that you do? Well, I work with women entrepreneurs in their first five years of business, breaking down their limiting beliefs that are preventing them from getting to the next level in experiencing the success that they deserve. Wonderful. So you have that down pat. <laughs> you said one word. So I was like, how do I make it in one big sentence? <laughs> Your 30 second elevator speech is really wonderful. Okay. So we both do similar things. I mean, I basically help people to master their communication skills from the inside out first from, uh, I call it inner fitness, so accepting and respecting and loving themselves like their own child. And then with inner peace and inner confidence and mastery and love, they just ooze out into their consistent good actions and their great relationships that they have both business and personal. So we both do some similar things. So let's jump into the topic. How to get out, first of all, what percent of the people you work with would you say are afraid to get out of their comfort zone? What percentage? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I would say a good 95%. That many, eh? That's why they work with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They have I mean, a clear vision. They know, they know where they want to go, but it's, they, they just get stuck in where they're at. And it's, you know, they have that vision, but the stepping stones to get there, they seem like such great leaps and they're very hesitant in taking any steps forward because they're scared they might do something wrong. They might take the wrong approach, right? So is, tell me in a nutshell, what is the main reason or reasons that they're afraid to get out of their comfort zone? That they're afraid to get outside of their comfort zone. Oh my goodness. Well, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of what other people think about them, any conditioning that they've had in the zero to 70 first years of life where, you know, they watched their parents' actions and that, you know, really implemented a lot of mental conditioning around, um, keeping themselves limited. So doing anything extra or extraordinary or different or something that's really authentic to themselves was always pushed down. Like, don't be so loud, put that down. You can't play with it that way. You know what I mean? Right. So what you're saying is that they have a sense of their vision. They're clear about what they want to go, but they get in their own way. Some of their negative emotional, psychological beliefs, which they probably took on themselves many years ago, they're still inside them and they allow themselves to be held back by those issues. Is that what you're saying in a nutshell? Yeah. So what have you found? I have found we've discovered the same thing, Lindsay. <laughs> I haven't, I, haven't, I don't I, just, I didn't just find it in other people. I found it in myself. I mean, when I was 19, I was clear that I wanted to do what I'm basically doing now. But I was also filled not just with a lot of insight and wisdom, but I was filled with psychological, emotional hindrances like fear. I was brought up in a family where my brother was uh, Mr. Everything on so many levels that I always compared myself to him. 
And of course, I put myself down. So I had a lot of insecurities and fears. So when I embarked in my own business, those fears didn't, didn't go away. They were still inside my sort of inner body, so to speak. So I think most of us are being held back by them. The question is, what do we do with that? So that's my next question to you, is how do you help people get out of that state? I think it's really powerful to realize what it is in your mind. And I think for the most part, it's become habitual. Those fears, those limitations, they become safe. And there's, and our brain prevents us from doing anything different because it wants to keep us safe, right? So as we experience all this stress, we're living in a state of constant survival. And when that part of our brain is activated, it's really hard to think about doing anything extra. It's such an, an enormous feat that's so almost overwhelming, it's better to just stay safe, right? So I like to, to go through kind of uh, the foundation of, of where it stems from, like I mentioned before, and how it really, um, how it transmutes right now and in their life, right? So to be able to get out of it, well, there's, ma there's many approaches. I really believe that it, it all depends on where they're at. And um, sorry, sorry, just one second. My little one is, yes, what can I do for you? <laughs> okay, well, go, go upstairs and play. <laughs> this oh, is Aurelia. Oh, she's oh, adorable. Alice. How are you? Good. You are adorable. <laughs> How old are you? Six. 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 Unbelievable. You, well, what a lovely daughter you are. I'm jealous. Thank you. <laughs> I am jealous. All right, my darling. Go play. Bye, okay, go play for bye. a little bit. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, I got distracted by answering my... Because my, I could see her pacing back. <laughs> and I'm like... Arr, arr, arr. My brain, we, brains don't multitask. I don't know if you know this, but we don't multitask. We think <laughs> we multitask, but we split our our brain in two different places. And then that 50-50 or that, you know, five, 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 five percent of our energy going in so many different directions, we don't actually get anything done. So especially when my mom brain is on and my kids are doing things that pull my attention, it's so hard to not be like magnetized to where they're at. So I apologize for that interview. You, don't, you do not have to apologize because this show is all about transparency. You see, whatever you get from us, you get. And this shows us how we deal with the challenges of life. We didn't expect that to happen, but it was a joy to see your little daughter. And we responded well. You see, we picked ourselves back up, got back on track. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We just demonstrated so, self-mastery. That's good. There. Perfect. That's perfect. So <clears throat> I'm interested to know before I answer how to break this, this habit of being within your comfort zone, how, how do you go through that process with your clients when, when they need to break free and be in a place of constant action? And that place of constant action is putting them in a place of the unknown, which, which elicits fear. How do you help them through that? Well, it's interesting. It goes back to a decision that I made a long time ago uh, when I decided to get into the coaching industry. What kind of coach do I want to be? Do I want to be a life coach? Do I want to be an inspirational, motivational speaker, whatever? And I felt that a lot of things that were being administered were all good. This is not a criticism, but a lot of things were rah-rah motivation where you get high, you get pumped up, and then you go back home and you get back to the same place that you were originally at or you could have a counselor or a coach that's more of a cheerleader and positive influences like a good friend. And that's very good too. But I felt something was missing. I wanted something more practical and I don't do a lot of in-depth therapy. I don't spend a lot of time going in to delve into why things happen. It may or may not be useful, but the first thing that I mentioned to people is that no change will happen until we get fed up. So if we see that we have patterns that are holding us back in our life, like getting out of our comfort zone, you're not going to get out of your comfort zone unless you say, you know what? The gig is up. I've had it. I'm sick and tired of fear getting in the way. I'm sick and tired of 
uh, anxiety and worry and stress getting in the way and holding me back from being the kind of person I really want to be and living the life I really want to live. So getting fed up is first. And if presumably they're fed up enough when they come to me. So then what I do is help them through uh, what I call the nine step process. So number two has to go, has to do with letting go um, anger, grudges and others, because sometimes we have to release some of that negativity and then we could get into step four, which I call the inner muscle building step, where I help them to transform their negative beliefs into positive and channel their emotions into passion and enthusiasm and love and confidence. So I kind of take a step-by-step -step approach, but it's a fast track approach and doesn't delve so much in in-depth therapeutic process. Not that that's not a good thing. That might be useful for some people at some, st uh, some stage of their life. But that's how I help them in, in the work that I do. That's brilliant. And I totally agree with being fed up because being fed up is the most magical place that you can be. Tell, really, tell us why. Tell us why. Because that's, that's the point of change. It's like, you know, the magical point of no return that you, that self-realization is so profound because you can, you can spew off all the wisdom and all the knowledge out there and it can offer some inspiration and insight but if they're not open to receiving that information and acting upon it it does nothing I, it really does nothing i agree with you 100 percent. it's like hitting rock bottom but it depends on what people do with it they could either use it to their advantage mm -hmm. and take action and really overcome it or they could go into a deep state of depression and become a victim of it. So it's a very critical point and it's really important that people take the right steps based on it. Absolutely. And it's, isn't, isn't that difference of, um, you know, the choose your own adventure after hitting that rock bottom and, and, and having the opportunity for self-realization, it's self-realization or it's depression. Exactly. It's crazy. And the fact that we are not, taught constructive ways to approach challenges in our life and we're not necessarily given the right tools to be able to overcome these challenges it's so easy for our environment to encourage us to enable us to go to depression and i think that's why so many people are stuck and they're searching for their life purpose because they're not given those tools of rock bottom is opportunity Right. Yeah, and it goes back, I agree with you 100%, and it goes back to why when, when we talk about what's holding people back, notice we said fear, it's an emotion. And we often hear a lot of positive stuff related to the mind is power, knowledge is power. Well, the knowledge is power when we want to become doctors, but I believe when it comes to self-development, the heart is power, uh, the, mm -hmm. not the mind. The mind is useful, but the heart is power, self-mastery is power. And a lot of things holding us back are on an emotional level. And often you hear a lot of things about affirmations, but you don't hear enough about how to transform the emotions. So that's why I think getting fed up is a first good step. And even when you do, uh, when I teach people affirmations, I have basic affirmations and what I called heart centered affirmations, which is a higher level of affirmations, which is much more powerful because at that point, you're coming from a much higher level of inner belief in yourself on an emotional level. So I agree with you. And that's why we do what we do, because it wasn't in taught in school. That's the problem. <laughs> exactly. And we, we wanted to go on that journey ourselves because we didn't have those tools. And we, we knew that we were to be greater, amazing, and move mountains because that's why we were created, you know, and that inner calling and that inner knowing just kept leading us to the next place, right? Yeah. And I love affirmations, yeah. and I think so many people use them incorrectly. I think they're, they're you know, repeating idle affirmations, even if they're the most powerful incantation combination of words, won't do anything for you if you don't um, create an emotion that moves you behind those words. It's funny right? you say that because last night I was on the phone with a friend of mine and she, she needed some help in, in terms of thought process. And, and I said to her, you've done a lot of good work You've done a lot of good affirmations. So let's say you take an affirmation. She wants to meet the right guy in her life, okay? So mm -hmm. let's say I, I say this affirmation. 
I am now attracting my ideal mate. I am now attracting my ideal mate. I, I said, that's good, but that's where it starts in the mind. But if you really want to have a powerful affirmation, try to create it so that you're in it now. I am now with my man. Wow, he's happy to see me. I'm articulating myself. We're inspiring one another. I can feel it. And it goes beyond just a rote series of words. You're painting the feeling as if you're in it. And there's so much more power in it. So I agree with you 100% there. So very quick, very, very quick story on that is very powerful that you said that because that's how I attracted my husband. Wow. And tell I was, us, tell us. I was, um, um, I had a very long relationship in my late teens. Um, my mom passed away when I was 16 and I was with this one guy for about six years. So before my mom died and after, and, um, I felt this attachment to him. I was very um, naive, very scared. Um, you know, thinking outside of the box was not a safe place for me to be at all. Um, Meek was safe and that's where I always stayed. So one day when I finally got the courage to kick him to the curb, um, because he was a compulsive liar and all these wonderful things for my self-development and growth in the future, <laughs> Um, I went through a series of relationships that had hints of similarity of that first uh, emotionally abusive relationship. And um, I watched the movie in 2006. I moved to Australia and started teaching yoga there and I saw The Secret. And, and I was um, really trying to delve into the feelings of having what I already had. And I had experienced a period of two years of celibacy. I said to myself, if I can't love myself, who am I attracting? Right. You know, and I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that heartache. I got to work on me first. And so, um, when I was in Australia, I met this lovely guy. I ended up moving to Belgium. That's a whole nother topic of conversation. I don't want to go there, but <laughs> I was so sad and depressed when I was with him. Cause I knew he wasn't the one in so many ways. And I mean, the one could be the one for a period of time in your life and things change, of course. Um, but I was just not happy at all. I, every, even though I was teaching yoga every night, I was like, when are we going to the pub for a beer? I was like, I did not want to be here mentally. I didn't want to be present at all. And I would go to bed at night, Alan, and I would cry myself to sleep and think of this amazing man of being held by his energy, what that would feel like and how safe I would be and, and laughing together and goofing around and just like going through experiences of we are already together. I didn't know what he looked like and I, I didn't care. I just knew that he had this beautiful magnetic energy that allowed me to be me and I allowed him to be him. And that was so glorious. And so maybe a few, a few, uh, a few weeks later, I started talking to an old friend on Facebook from high school. We had a few classes together. And long story short, um, we ended up opening a yoga studio together. But because it was a business thing, I was like, no, 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 no. But he was such a gentleman. Like, we would have these business meetings before you know, when we were writing our business plan, he would go to Starbucks, he would order my drink before I even got there, he would be there sitting, my drink was there. It's the little things, the little things. And I was like, no, 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 we're in business together. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I had a friend of mine who kind of adopted me as her, her daughter. She was like, she was like my, my surrogate mom. And she said, what are you doing? Are you blind? Do you know <laughs> this? <laughs> it's perfect in every way. It's, it's and she handed to you on a platter. And and actually, that's why I, what I asked the universe for. Well, I you know, it's a that's such a powerful story and a good role model uh, for all of us. I had very quick, and then we we'll, we got to wrap up. But uh, yeah. when I was when I was twenty one, I mm -hmm. went through a self development uh, weekend workshop, and they talked about visualization and traction and all that. So I thought who do I want to meet right now? And I start to visualize this woman, exactly the kind of woman that I, I just, I love. 
And I kind of listed everything and I affirmed it for days. And then one day I'm in a, um, a co- uh, not a coffee shop, a restaurant that my friend owned. And this woman walks by and I said to my friend, stop, I gotta, I'll be right back. I literally, I, it wasn't just because she was good looking. There was an energetic pull. Mm. I had to meet this woman. I walked outside. I followed her. She turned around before I, 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 I got close to her. And she asked me for the name of a street. And I told her what the na- where to go. And I said, well, by the way, my friend has a coffee shop. Do you want to come in? She was from out of town. Had a coffee shop that night. We went out for a drink. And I told her, I said, I don't know why we've met but I'm going to love you unconditionally no matter what happens in your life. And she said, no man could be my friend. And I said, I'll prove you wrong. And yeah, I loved her 22 years unconditionally. She passed away 10 years ago. She was like a twin soul sister soulmate of mine. And it was the most incredible. I learned more about unconditional love than any time in my entire life. And that's, that's the power of, again, that's the power of overcoming, getting back to our topic, getting out of our comfort zone, Once you get inner freedom, then creativity and intuition kicks in and magic kicks in. So it's wonderful. Now, we've got to wrap it up, my dear. So, Lindsay, this has been a great spontaneous little (laughs) session. Uh, Why don't you let people know uh, how to get in touch with you uh, and, you know, who's, who's the kind of person is your ideal client and how do they get in touch with you? Oh, my ideal client bestie. They're they're women entrepreneurs in their first five years of business, just like I mentioned, and that they're really struggling and really in in their mind and in their foundation for their business. And they want to take it to the next level and they want to get there without having to go through years and years and years of self-development and course after course and frustration. So the best way to get a hold of me is I have a Facebook group that I go live in constantly. I give tons of wonderful insight and lots of great conversation there. Um, And so I can give you the link so it's easier to find. Um, And, um, or you can email me contact at lindsaycholak.com. And so how can everybody get a hold of you? Well, alanknight.com is my website. Alan at alanknight.com is my email Uh, Really, there's two types of people that might be interested. One that wants to fast track their personal development. So within 90 days, they go through the process that I have developed over the years that will help them get really clear, really inner fit, confident, focused, and start to master more of their communication skills. Uh, I do a complimentary evaluation. And another type of person, I've started a nightlife certification program for people that would like to become a coach and actually coach the nine steps that I teach. So if you're interested in that, it's all on my website, alanknight.com. Lindsay, this was great. We have to do it again. Absolutely. We'll, we'll see what the response is. And if people like it, we'll, we'll do it again. Yeah. So if you guys liked watching us chat <laughs> and comment, let us know. Give us some ideas for new topics of conversation and we'll do another one. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.